Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my wonderful special guest co-host. So I have two two special guest co-hosts, Chris Ward and Kiana Holloman. How y'all doing? Good, how are you? Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you. So for those that don't know, the these two uh, wonderful co-hosts are uh, part of our corporate communication team, and they, they keep me... They, they normally work behind the scenes and, and they're, they're the ones that make me look good in front of uh, the world whenever they're doing our press releases or or, or shooting or, or taking pictures and, and working with uh, local media. So uh, thank you all for being here today. Of course. Absolutely. And I won't I won't tell the world if y'all were volunteer, y'all volunteer for this or y'all volunteer to do this, but it doesn't matter. We're going to have a great show. Uh, but today we have a, a super talented musician uh, that's gracing the platform today. Uh, without further ado, Chris, please introduce today's guest. Hey, Chief. We have a country music chart with us today. You, you probably know him from his number one singles, including Watching You, Take a Back Road, and the title track from his 2019 album, Caught Up in the Country, which cut the record for the longest run on the country singles chart. In addition to his solo work, he and his wife, Rose Falcon, are recording music together and their self-titled EP, Rod Plus Rose, is released in January 28, 2022. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Rodney Atkins. Hey. Hey. What's up? <laughs> this is cool. Hey, Rodney, can you hear me? I can. Oh, okay. How you doing today? I'm good, man. How you doing, Chief? Oh, I can't complain at all. So I want to first say thank you so much for joining us today. And can you let us know where you're coming from today? Where you calling us from today? I'm actually home. I'm in Nashville. Um, I'm here. Uh, I think I got one more show this uh, weekend, and then we're actually going up to play Fox and Friends on the first week of December. And we're tapping out for the for the end of the year. Gotcha, gotcha. So how was your uh, Thanksgiving? Oh, it was great. It was good. We kind of, my parents live about, oh, a couple hours from Nashville. So we had uh, dinner with Rose's dad on Thanksgiving, then drove up to see my folks. Just a good old, good old fashioned Thanksgiving, man. It's nice to, you know, have something close to normal after the last few years. <laughs> it's been great. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you had a good one. Yeah, man. Thank you. So, Rodney, you have a, a long history of being, being a big supporter of the military community. Uh, you've had multiple USO tours, played in military installations and other campaigns. What is it that drives your passion for supporting the military? Oh, wow. Um, man, so a few years ago when I first started having uh, success as a uh, as a, as an artist. Uh, the first tune that kind of was going up the charts was "If You're Going Through Hell," and right when I was out and about, uh, I happened to be in San Diego actually, and didn't know about Pendleton, didn't know about the the soldiers down there, the Marines, and uh, the deal with Fallujah. I think that's how you said it, Fallujah. That happened. And a bunch of those men were just getting to the hospital. And I was asked if I would like to go meet them. And I did. And I just walked from room to room with a guitar and I'd hang out and, and sing if you're going through hell. And it, it changed me. Just them coming straight back. Some of them had just lost limbs, eyes. Um, but man, they nobody complained. They were just... All they were talking about was fast tracking their recovery and getting back to work. And uh, from that moment forward, I said, well, if they're doing what they are doing. <laughs> they're doing what they're doing. I'm going to do the most that I can possibly do to just encourage uplift. And just the closer you get, you learn to what 
the, the what that really means the sacrifices and and their family sacrifices oh my god it's it's unbelievable uh and the more you do it the more you want to do it it's just so inspiring i get more out of it than they do i'm sure but all the places i've had the honor to go and um in the middle of afghanistan with freezing rain coming down you never hear one person complain they are honored to do it it's it it's something that if everybody in this country man had that that feeling that drives them um it would be a it would be a, a much better place for sure so you spoke a bit about just the feelings and the passion behind what you do as well as the reactions in the crowd but what are some of your other favorite memories of playing live for our heroes and supporting service members wow people have asked me like what's your favorite venue what's your favorite place to play and they're talking about you know big arenas and uh red rocks outside of denver that's this kind of natural amphitheater beautiful and those are they're great but i gotta tell you some of my favorite places to play was just me having a guitar uh sitting on a stump or something in afghanistan playing a fob surrounded by uh you got army medics you got marines you got kind of everybody just sitting there singing farmer's daughter <laughs> at a fob is kind of surreal and, and i'll never forget the first time i played in afghanistan actually i was playing i think it was called fob Olay, and there was a i was singing it's america it's america's i think the fourth hit that i had fourth number one and uh i was standing there it was muddy and i'm singing it's america in afghanistan an id exploded they had sirens went off they had the, the medics had to take off pick up a marine bring him back and they told me to keep singing and so okay here we go and they actually had to amputate they sent him on to germany they came out and said well, we missed the concert. Can you come sing for us while we clean up? And I'm thinking, well, if you can do that, I can do this. And uh, I'll never forget that. It's America. I can't, I don't sing that song without thinking about that moment. That's awesome. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, a tremendous story. Um, kind of what you said about, uh, you know, being deployed or being down range, it, it changes you. I, I can totally relate to that, you know, obviously from being a military service member, but uh, you just don't realize, um, you know, once you're in that environment and once you're around people that uh, you probably, you, you need each other to, to actually survive, man, it, it it just puts life in perspective to, you know, when we get back home, it's like, okay, we're, we're, we're disagreeing and we're fighting over little small frivolous things. But, you know, when you're over there, you're like, we need each other in the game to, to live, right? And, and so that perspective just changed my life completely uh, after I after I deployed. And so uh, for you as someone to, to, to volunteer to go down range and um, and play play some music uh, for for our service members and, and being able to get that same feeling that those service members have uh, that camaraderie that uh, that love that passion. Man, I think that's uh, that's awesome, man. Just thank you so much for doing that. Oh, it's an honor. It's I'll, I'll, I cherish it. I hope to get to do more. Um, it's it is it's it's just so many special people when you get to visit with them and you hear their stories. It is it's an honor. Thanks for saying that. Awesome, awesome. So, um, kind of switching gears to the pandemic, it were tough on all of us, uh, and, and it's still crazy even today. So, but I know it's really changed how performers were able to kind of connect with their fans. So how did you stay connected to your fans during the during the height of the pandemic? And uh, what's it like being able to play in front of a live crowd again? <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't know much about this kind of. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think we all got better at it. Uh, and yet it allowed us to stay connected and to. Um, I, I guess because technology is what it is, it, it sort of lended itself to people staying connected. Uh, 
I think you can get too much of it. <laughs> but uh, it staying in touch with folks, man, that was the best way I learned to be able to, you know, hook up some of my stuff and be able to play this way. And uh, but you know, there's nothing like humans coming together to fellowship to just kind of lose track of time, forget where you are. Um, I say my job is a distraction most of the time. It's what I'm supposed to do. And uh, getting to play live shows and seeing these communities come back together has been amazing, uh, really amazing. I think we all took for granted what we get to do a little bit. And so uh, it's every show has been really magical this year. That's awesome. Glad, glad to see you back on the road. So um, your wife, Rose Falcon, in, in, in addition to having one of the coolest names ever, is also a singer and a songwriter. Um, so in addition to your solo work, the two of you have recently joined Musical Forces from the duo Rod Plus Rose. So what can fans expect with this new collaboration? Man, it's just, it's real honest music. It, she's She's a I kind of do what I do. I'm meat and potatoes kind of country music singer. I'm, I, I kind of sing about, you know, if your song, if I'm going to release a song, you know, it's going to be in this kind of territory. What she does is man is pushes me to kind of get outside of that box and, and uh, push myself as a singer. She's an amazing singer songwriter. Um, and she, sings all kinds of parts she's a one person choir man it's 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 awesome what what she can do and it's just kind of a little it's a little bit of what i've always done but it's it's got a lot of kind of a territory i've never gone to as a solo artist um but it's real it's real meat and potatoes love songs i think for real couples out there you know love ain't all blue skies and no bills it's about people ask what the secret is. There ain't no secret. It's knowing there's not a secret. It's knowing you're going to stick with that person no matter what. That's the deal forever. Just go ahead and forgive her and she, she forgive him for everything they ever do. You're there. And uh, these these songs reflect that, honestly, from loving somebody. I just I never knew what that was like until I met her and I'll get to sing about it. That's beautiful. So being someone who loves love songs and just good music in general, how do you feel that um, having your career before when you were a solo artist, kind of having some fun party music going to the love music, how do you feel like it made you a better performer, a better artist, um, especially with working with your wife? Um, no doubt. I mean, when she started influencing me and uh, started singing together it made me more vulnerable and i think that definitely makes music better before my love songs were about uh like the song watching you is about my kid teaching him to cuss and pray um if you're going through hell's about coming through a struggle um it's america that's a love song i had a song called cleaning this gun about having a daughter <laughs> And uh, that's a love song. These are my people, a love song, but not one-on-one -on -one love songs. I kind of really didn't get into that. And so it just makes you more vulnerable and that makes everything better. It uh, makes you more nervous when you finally put a song out there for people to hear it. Oh yeah, now you, you hit some, some stuff right on the head, especially when you said, uh, Love is not blue skies and, and no bills because there's definitely bills involved. Yeah, and also uh, cleaning my gun. I, I I got I was fortunate to have all boys, so uh, I guess somebody's <laughs> cleaning the gun uh, behind my son, yeah. my son. But I I didn't get a chance to uh, have any girls. But uh, but no no that's that's awesome. And um, can, so can you touch on some of your biggest musical inspirations and influences? Sure, man. Uh, my parents actually said when I was like five years old, they asked me what I wanted to do when I grew up, thinking I'd say 
you know, Spider-Man or b- play baseball or something. And, and I didn't really sing in front of people ever, but they said, I asked, how do you get to be Charlie Daniels? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> truthfully, that guy, I mean, I listened to him over and over when I was a kid. And then when I met Charlie, he was, he's, he was one of a kind human. He's one of the most special people I've ever come across. And, uh, actually continuing some of his work with military still that he started like the uh, MTSU outside of Nashville, Murfreesboro. There's a program where they're uh, basically helping to continue education for military and uh, with General Huber heading that up. And Charlie kind of started that program. They built a, a veteran center there in his in his wife, Miss Hazel's name. And so I'm working with General Hubert to help continue that program. Uh, Charlie was just, he's larger than life isn't even the best way to put it. He made you feel like you were special when you talked to him. And there was a lot, a childlike fire in his eyes every time I talked to him. When he sang, and man, the way he treated people, he's the biggest influence on me uh not only musically just as a person oh man well big big shout out to charlie uh for kind of laying that foundation for you uh to to do the great things that you're doing uh if you could and i'm pretty sure charlie is probably one of the people but if you could share the stage with anyone past or present uh who, who would you choose yeah i got to sing with charlie several times man he passed away last year um uh, George Jones was one of them I got to sing with. Uh, who, 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 who? Never sang with Garth. We love to sing with Garth. Garth, man, he made me believe in the the magic of music when he first came out. I was just out of high school, and man, uh, never sung with Garth. We love to do that. Awesome. No, no, we we got a a, cr- a great opportunity to to have an interview with Garth. Uh, uh, it's almost a year year now uh, ago. Wow. Uh, and he was awesome. He was amazing. We had, we were, at, we, I was at Cannon Air Force Base in uh, New Mexico, and uh, I was able yeah. to get about six or seven airmen from that base to be able to call in on the call. And he talked to them oh. individually. He gave shout outs to my, their mom and dad, all kind of other stuff. So it was just a, a magical moment. He's, he's a good dude. That's, he's Charlie. He and Charlie are that way. They're the two people that they make each person feel special. Like the world goes away when they're talking to you. It's really a, uh, it's just a gift they have. And I know they work at it, but man, special dudes. Yeah, outstanding. So um, right now we have uh, a lot of members from the military community from all over the world watching live with us today. And so the floor is yours. You have any message you want to share with our nation's heroes? Man, just, you know, sincerely. I wish there was a better word <laughs> to mean it but sincerely god bless them my me and my family pray for them and think of them every single day um i know that the reason uh united states of america is the best country in the world is because of them because of what they're doing um as crazy as this world is now they got it right they're they're holding it down and i sincerely appreciate them and hope they have a you know can feel the magic of of the holiday season just to bless them wherever they may be um it just what they do i'm in awe of them and uh hopefully i'll get to shake their hands or hug their necks more as we go out to uh to visit them So, Rodney, you're getting an amazing reception on our live feed, and I want to share just a few of the comments with you. So, Brenda Taki is watching from San Antonio, and she says that your story with your wife and you both working together is so beautiful. And she wanted to share that her husband and her have been together for 22 years, and they just had their anniversary, and he's away serving our country right now. Also, Julie says, what an experience it must be creating music and art with your wife. So what else is on the horizon for you? Any upcoming projects you can share with us? For sure. So we, uh, 
Rose and I just put out a Christmas song called Mary Had a Little Lamb. That just came out for this holiday season. It's a tune that we wrote. And it's not the nursery rhyme. <laughs> um, and uh, so the whole project I did with Rose will be out in January, like the end of January. And uh, then I'm working on a new solo record that will be out later in the year, probably in the summertime. And uh, so I'm just kind of writing, recording, and uh, we're going out and playing. Like I said, we got Fox and Friends coming up on December 10th. I will totally tune in. Before we say goodbye, can you remind our viewers where they can go to follow you, keep up with what you're working on, and hear both your and Rod and Rose's newest singles? You bet, man. Just Rod plus Rose or Rodney Atkins. Rose Falcon, Spotify, Apple, Pandora, all those good places, YouTube. Um, I'm, you can email me, Rod, at RodneyAtkins.com, A-T-K-I-N-S, Rod at RodneyAtkins.com. Um, and I just love everybody. Wish them all a Merry Christmas. Hey, hey uh, Rodney, I just want to uh, – I got a couple comments on my page as well, and I want to kind of uh, show them some love. Uh, I got Val Beasley uh, waving at you uh, today. Um, I got Amy Sweet. Miles that said, thanks, Rodney. And uh, then I have awesome. Lindsay Rodriguez. I have Lindsay Rodriguez that says, thank you for your amazing song, Watching You, My Family, and I Love It. That means the world. Yeah. And, and I, that means the world. And like I said, and, and I got a chance to, uh, you know, uh, kind of get caught up on on your on your uh, catalog and and watching you is it kind of reminds me that you just never know who's watching you. I know it was to your son <laughs> uh, and 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 he's picking up all the your good and bad habits. But uh, you just mm -hmm. you just never know who in the world is watching and you influence. So I tell, to tell people to always, you know, make it a point to be nice, make it a point to be genuine to people because you are yeah. setting the example for the rest of the world. So uh, thank you for that. That's for all. Sure. The, the first time I ever played that song, I, I wrote it. I wrote it about my son being, he was four. He was singing, if you're going through hell in the lunch line. <laughs> it's, it's and that's what inspired me to write watching you. But then a couple weeks after I wrote it, I was actually asked to play at a welcome back ceremony for some military folks coming back from Kuwait. And I said, hey, y'all, I just... Uh, so basically all the men and women coming back and their kids came as well. A lot of the kids were dressed in fatigues like their parents. So they were all together. And then I was just there to play some songs. I said, hey, I just wrote this song. I wanted to try it out for y'all if I could. And it was that moment when I played that song that I felt like it was something special. When I sang the got cowboy boots and camo pants and they're all dressed alike out there. It was it was an amazing moment. That was the first time I ever played it. I was so grateful to get to share it for a welcome back ceremony like that. Yeah. And I even saw on your on your Instagram, people been sending you like, I guess, a post of, of a father and son, uh, either they're dressed alike or they're doing the same mannerisms. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a, a Rodney Atkins challenge or watching you challenge or something. So I love it. I love it. Yeah, we've seen a lot of different stuff. It's it's that's everything man when people make one of your songs they say it's their song and they just you know becomes part of them it's a that's that just blows me away awesome man so uh but rodney thank you so much for being on the show uh i just want to let our chief chat viewers know that this episode is available on youtube and spotify so uh if you want to rewatch it or share it with your friends uh please go out to youtube spotify go to chief chat rodney atkins and it should pop up um but rodney man it's been a you know, if I was to sit down and talk to you and not knowing what your occupation was, about five minutes in, I would say you're a country singer. Like you, you have all the mannerisms. <laughs> you have the, just the oh, whole man. of a country singer. So, man, it, it was awesome oh. sitting down and talking to you. Man, it's my pleasure. It's awesome to get to talk with y'all, and I hope you have a merry, merry Christmas, y'all. Happy New Year. Absolutely. And so, uh, this means a lot to our our military community. Uh, you know, hanging out with us. Uh, you know, what I'm saying it does so much. It's just like, you know, being down range and, and playing a song just for people to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, I, I think you, you'll gain a, a, some more fans uh, after this interview. So we wish you all the best, uh, Rodney. If you don't mind uh, hanging on right after the live, 
uh, just for some formal goodbyes. But uh, we wish yeah, you man. and your family the, the happiest of holidays. Uh, man, thank you so much for being here. And Chief Chet out.